Now comes probably my favorite problem in all uh, gas laws. It's dealing with real gases as opposed to ideal gases. So in an ideal gas, what you do not worry about is you do not worry about molecules interacting with one another, nor do you worry about the actual volume of the molecules themselves. You actually treat the volume of the molecules themselves as actually zero. What causes gases to have molecules is the, the kinetic energy, the collisions between the gas molecules. That's also what causes, causes there to be a pressure, say for instance, in a, in, a, in a balloon or a basketball or a football or volleyball. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to look at one mole of chlorine gas whose temperature is going to be room temperature 25 degrees Celsius or 298.15 Kelvin and has a volume of 5 liters. And we're going to, we want to determine the pressure. We want to determine the pressure. And so for A, we're going to use the ideal gas law to find the pressure. So pressure is equal to nRT all upon V, which is equal to one mole of chlorine gas times R, which is 0 0.08206 liter atmosphere mole Kelvin times our temperature, which is 298.15 Kelvin divided by our volume, which is going to be 5.00 liters. Our liters cancel, our kelvins cancel, our moles cancel, and we're left in the units of atmosphere. And for that, what I got is I got 4.89 atmospheres. So that's going to be for A. That's going to be for A. Now please excuse me, I'm gonna just erase this because we're very familiar with the ideal gas law. The ideal gas law, once again, does not care about the molecule, the, does not care about the interaction between the molecules, and it doesn't care about the volume of the molecules themselves. And lastly, it doesn't care about the identity of the molecule. We'll treat carbon, we'll treat chlorine the same as we treat carbon dioxide, the same as we treat uh, water molecule, the same as we treat hydrogen helium. It doesn't matter, we treat them all the same. Now for B, what we want to do is we're going to use the van der Waals. We're going to use van der Waals constant. So for B, we want to use van der Waals equation, which is going to be P plus N squared A all over V squared times V minus N B is equal to N R T. So we want to solve this for pressure is what we want to do. We want to solve it for pressure. So we can divide this term over here. So we have pressure plus N squared A all over V squared is equal to N R T all over V minus N B. We can subtract this over to there and what we end up getting is we get pressure is equal to nRT all over V minus NB minus N squared A all over V squared. Now in the van der Waals equation, that's going to take into account the volume of the mole of the molecules and it's going to take into account the interaction of those molecules with each other. A and B are constants that you can find on a table and so A for chlorine is going to be equal to 6.49 liters squared atmospheres mole Kelvin and B is equal to 0.04 five, six, two liter per mole. And what we're going to do is we're going to plug that into our pressure such that our pressure now is equal to N, which is one mole times R, which is 0 0.08206 liter atmosphere mole Kelvin times our temperature which is 298.15 Kelvin 
divided by our volume, divided by our volume, which is going to be 5.00 liters minus N, which is one mole times B, and our B is 0 0.0562 liter per mole, minus, now we have to work with this portion over here. So N is going to be one mole, and we have to square that times A, which is 6.49 liters squared atmosphere all over a mole Kelvin divided by our volume squared, which is going to be 5.00 liters squared. Whew. <laughs> it's quite the equation, isn't it? You go through and you do, the, you do some arithmetic here, and what you end up getting is you get 24.47, and this is going to be, so you get the Kelvins cancel, Kelvins cancel, moles cancel, moles cancel, and you get the liter atmosphere all over. You do this arithmetic, so the mole cancels with the mole, you take 5 minus 0 0.0562 and you get 4.9438 and that's going to be a liter minus, you do this over here so the moles squared will cancel with the moles squared there. Oops, that should be a 2 up there. I dropped that. So this cancels with that. All right. The liters cancel with the liters, and so what you end up with is atmospheres. You end up with atmospheres on that end. Let me make sure I got that right. Uh, mole squared, liter squared, atmosphere. Yes, that that's what you get. Yes, yes, that's right. So you're going to get atmospheres there. So when you do this arithmetic, you get 0 0.2596 liters. Now here, this liter will cancel with that liter, so you get an atmosphere. So when you do this arithmetic, what you get is you get 4.95 atmospheres minus this term over here, which is 0 0.2596 five, nine, six uh, atmospheres. It's not liters, it's atmospheres. Good grief, there's the atmospheres right there. Oh, sorry. Atmospheres, my goodness gracious. Atmospheres. You do this simple arithmetic and what you get is you get 4.69 atmospheres. And you notice that these two numbers are totally different. And the reason being is this is taking into account interactions of the chlorine molecules with one another. So as these chlorine molecules are attracted to one another, they cannot collide with the walls of the vessel at the exact same velocity because they're hindered due to the attraction to other chlorine molecules. Likewise, because of the volume of the molecules themselves, that's going to reduce the pressure as well. So you have two things you have to take into account when you're dealing with a van der Waals gas or a real gas, in that the molecules are attracted to one another. Due to that attraction, there's a hindering of the average, kinet of the average velocity, which leads to the average kinetic energy, which means that they cannot hit the walls of the vessel nearly fast enough to create the pressure that you see with an ideal gas. Likewise, also, the, the volume of the molecules in and of themselves. Now, the only gas that really behaves both as a real gas and, and, a, and an ideal gas, or, or, or the only gas that really behaves as an ideal gas in reality, is going to be helium. Helium, for the most part, acts as though it's an ideal gas. So that's why a lot of times you see it in a lot of problems. Hydrogen does for the most part as well, too, but there's a little deviation between it as an ideal gas and really the reality of it as a gas. If you have any questions about these problems in this chapter or anything else, please let me know.